Can you imagine a world where carbon emissions are no longer a problem? A world where carbon capture and sequestration technology is cheap and plentiful? A world where climate change has slowed and maybe even reversed? Where the quality of our air was better? What would that look like? How would that impact you and your family? That's what we're going to talk about today on Future Unfolded. Often called CCS for carbon capture and sequestration, the natural form of this is when Mother Nature works to balance out the atmosphere by storing excess carbon dioxide in trees and plants. Plants and trees absorb CO2 from the atmosphere during photosynthesis and store the carbon in their roots, stems, and leaves. We can use carbon capture technologies to suck carbon dioxide out of the air and transport it to some storage location where it can remain, hopefully undisturbed, and locked away in a spot where it won't cause greenhouse effects. And this isn't science fiction, but a real and critical part of our fight against climate change. Sometimes we do this right at the exhaust pipe of a large emission source like a power plant and transport it and store it underground in rock formations or depleted oil and gas reserves. But what we often hear about these days are carbon capture machines that look like a wall of fans working to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Do you feel like advancements in carbon capture and sequestration could help turn around climate change? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're unsure, stick around as I'll talk about innovations in carbon capture. There is too much CO2 in the atmosphere. Over 30 gigatons of CO2 is added to the atmosphere each year. To put that in perspective, that's 60 times the mass of all people in the world in greenhouse-causing, non-breathable gas. This is a big part of why we're experiencing climate change. In order to turn things around, we no longer need to reach net zero, but instead we need to push towards negative emissions. Negative emissions is where we pull more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than we're putting into it. We are currently capturing a very small amount of carbon dioxide from the air because doing so requires a ton of energy. I've heard it explained similarly to trying to remove cream stirred into a coffee. It might be possible to create technology to do that, but wouldn't it be easier to just not put cream into the coffee if you decide you don't want it? If you looked at the direct air carbon capture facilities in 2020, you'd see only 15 of them worldwide pulling around 9,000 tons of CO2 from the air each year combined. That's around the same as taking 2,000 gasoline-powered cars off the roads. Even if we met Jane Zelikova's estimate of needing to pull 10 gigatons of CO2 per year by 2050, we would still have a Herculean amount of decarbonization work we would have to do to account for the other 20 plus gigatons we're adding each year. And so while this seems insurmountable, I believe with some changes in mentality, we could accomplish this goal. Unfortunately, one of the issues with carbon capture and sequestration is that we live in a capitalist society, and so most companies are looking to make money from this effort, either by capturing for reuse, or as we see with the oil and gas industry, selling storage locations. I've seen so many discussions about planting more trees, and while we definitely need to do so, it isn't the solution to the situation we are now in. We can't plant enough trees to turn around the carbon dioxide floating around in the atmosphere because we need the land for cities, farming, and other uses. And even if we could take back all that land, we've gone beyond what trees can fix in human timescales. If the average mature tree can absorb around 50 pounds or a bit more than 22 and a half kilograms of CO2 per year, and one gigaton is the equivalent of one trillion metric tons, and one metric ton is a thousand kilograms, then we just need to increase the number of trees we have by around 1.3 trillion trees. If every person on the entire planet started planting trees, each of us would have to add approximately 167 trees, not counting the normal replacement rate that we'd need for the ones being harvested today, and we'd still have to wait decades until most of them were mature enough to take their maximum amount of CO2 from the atmosphere. Planting more trees can be part of the solution, but it isn't a singular answer to the mess we've gotten ourselves into. I want to try to paint a picture of what the world of 2050 might look like if we heavily innovate in the area of carbon capture and sequestration technology, so I hope you'll indulge me in telling a short story. You wake up and you look at your phone. The latest stories on social media discuss how some countries have spent so much more than others on cleaning the atmosphere, while yet other countries are still polluting. You get up and you make your coffee. The bag of beans highlights the company's contributions to negative admissions. You remember the craziness of carbon credits and how it allowed companies to pollute for so much longer than they would have otherwise. 
You don't mind that still developing countries are still polluting, as so many countries are at a net negative that there hasn't been an air quality warning in almost three years. That's what matters most to you because your mother has asthma and high blood pressure and you used to wake up feeling anxious that the next bad air quality day was going to be her last. You remember your own issues catching your breath during some of the climate change induced forest fires that used to rage every year and can't imagine always feeling that way. You take a deep breath and feel energized to tackle the day. It's time to order an auto to pick you up for work. The sunrise is blasting beautiful tones of pink, purple, and blue into the sky, but there are several thick cables outside of your window. For a moment, you think that your apartment building is having their windows cleaned yet again. But as a corner of a silver metallic box comes into view, you realize that they're lowering the giant air purifiers from the roof. No longer needed, the wasted energy and space is being converted into more room for solar, a much more appropriate use of your rent money. You pause for a moment to consider how much energy had to be wasted to clean the air inside of schools, office buildings, apartments, apartments and homes, and the constant struggle to get people to wear masks so that they didn't contribute more to the growing health crises directly related to climate change and its secondary effects. The idea that your own future children will never need to learn the smell of a room where the CO2 filter had been all used up makes you glad that the governments stepped in. As you exit the apartment building, you see children playing in a park across the street. Some of it is fenced off as it's being rebuilt. It hadn't been used very often when you were younger, as there were far too many low air quality or dreadfully hot and humid days during the summer. Great weather we are having today, a man walking his dog says, smiling as he passes. It really is. While direct air capture technology might not seem very impressive today, I still feel like this technology is in its infancy, and it's ripe for developments that'll improve its efficiency and reduce its cost. We just need more countries and companies to invest in this research, and I believe that it could someday be one of the best tools we have to turn things around. Though even with the innovations, it will require large and expensive facilities and massive amounts of electricity. Switching now to a more commonly used system for carbon capture is Metal Organic Frameworks MOFs, that intercept CO2 right from the smokestacks of factories. This technology, while more mature, is still very costly and has harsh secondary environmental effects due to its use of heavy metal salts and toxic solvents. Using the coffee and cream analogy from before, this is more like trying to get the cream out of the coffee before you stir it in. It is easier, but you probably won't get all of it. Biochar is often mentioned in carbon capture discussions, and it's what happens when you heat organic material in a low or no oxygen environment at high temperatures. It's sort of like a special type of charcoal. It is a solid residue of elemental carbon that can be used to help improve crop yield, if applied correctly, and keeps the carbon from entering the atmosphere as CO2. It's not ideal, but it's one method that feels the most naturalistic. Unfortunately, it won't scale to meet our needs, but it could be a tool in the toolbox for decreasing carbon dioxide release. Another somewhat naturalistic approach is enhanced weathering or ocean alkalinity enhancement, a technique that uses a chemical reaction to store CO2 using minerals on land or in the oceans. You might think doing anything else to the oceans is a horrible idea, but the ocean is our largest carbon storage location. Unfortunately, ocean alkalinity enhancement at the scale we'd likely need would increase the alkalinity of the ocean, likely negatively impacting its ecology. One of the strangest options that I found was the Liquid 3 bioreactor. While many companies are looking to use algae to convert CO2 into oxygen in an efficient way, Liquid 3 is making what they call liquid trees, which can replace one 10-year-old adult tree in what it's able to do. And the devices are designed for the urban environment, able to be placed where a tree can't. Going forward, the technology might be able to remove CO2 at a rate of 10 to 50 times that of mature trees. The algae could then be used for food, fertilizer, or other needs. While I don't think the Liquid 3 is something we should chase as the primary solution, more efficient photobioreactors are being developed and improved at a positive rate. With the timescales we have to turn things around and keep climate change in check, we need to push our politicians, corporations, and wealthy industrialists towards making these technologies our highest priority. This isn't an issue that we can wait for several more political cycles. Please take some time to learn more about this topic and share it with others. The crux of this change is really energy generation. The most important thing will be high power, low cost, and low emission energy sources. 
CCS techniques will require huge amounts of energy to build the capture system, maintain them, and transport the CO2 to where it'll be sequestered. It's not an easy issue, but check out my video on geothermal energy, as it could be the power source we need to make carbon capture cheap and effective as it's already doing in Iceland.